So hello everyone, my, my name is Hal Lei. Uh, thank you to the folks of Apple for being here today. I'm here to uh, present my amplifier design. Um, so clearly there's a lot of knobs to tweak. Um, and my approach was more of an iterative approach um, where I start out with uh, initial guess point uh, informed by uh, the gain spec. And then I move on to uh, getting an idealized circuit with ideal biasing, um, ideal current sources. And then from there, I tweak these variables that are sort of decoupled. Um, and when you approximate it, uh, they do become decoupled. And then you repeat this iterative optimization loop where every time I get the specs, I reduce the current, and that would mess up my specs. And then I repeat that loop until um, I reach, uh, I converge towards uh, optimized design. And then from there, uh, it's pretty trivial to build the biasing circuits with the appropriately sized uh, dimensions. And so this is sort of a poor man's gradient descent with just a hint of spice monkeying. Um, and you will see that I do indeed sweep one variable, which is fine. Um, and so this is very comprehensive flowchart. I will break it down to very digestible chunks. First off, after estimating the parameters, uh, technology parameters, we've done this in a class assignment, so I didn't really have to do any of that. Um, we determine the upper bounds of the total current draw, or uh, in other words, the current reference. And how I did this was that um, you can essentially count um, most of these branches will draw the current reference, but for example, the input pair differential uh, uh, PMOSs that would draw twice, and that last common source stage, um, I really don't know how much current I'm going to dump into there, but I know that it's probably not going to be just the, uh, the reference current. Um, I probably want to dump a lot more transconductance into transistor 9 for that nice uh, margin performance. Um, and so this serves as a nice sanity check because once you do the math, you would see that if the current reference is more than 65 microamps, then something is seriously wrong and I would have to rethink my design. So after that, I move on to the trans uh, bias transconductance and this is simply by approximating um, the composite gain of the two stages. Um, and so uh, I'm making a lot of assumptions here, but when you reduce it down, um, they are essentially functions of RO and the bias transconductance. Well, here's the problem. Um, pesky RO, pesky transconductance of transistor 9. Um, I was a little lazy in that I did not find lambda. I don't know how the first group did it. Um, but I made a very educated um, guess with, uh, with what RO could be based on my previous projects. I went to it, and then I took a look at the operating points of those trans uh, transistors. Um, same goes for the tr uh, transconductance of transistor 9. I went ahead and just assumed that it was the biased transconductance, but this would probably be not be the case. Um, I also put a nominal value to RO around uh, 1 mega ohm. As long as I'm in that rough order of magnitude, um, I should be okay. And so once you plug it into the gain uh, equation and you uh, put it aside, uh, put it next to the gain spec you would see that uh, at minimum, the transconductance should be at least 86 microsiemens. Um, and so and again, this serves as a really nice sandy check. And it also allows me to fix my first variable, uh, which is this transconductance, um, bias transconductance. And so I took a very liberal start of around 200 microsiemens. And then from there, we can derive um, where we actually pick the overdrive voltage. I chose a value of 0.2. This is reasonable because it allows common mode swing on inputs and outputs, but it also allows for some fluctuations in the simulation where I don't want to pick the lowest VOV, which is uh, 0.15, because if it fluctuates, I will violate that condition. Um, it also, now that I've also picked the VOV, I've informed all the gate uh, voltage biasings at all of the gates of the transistors. They're in terms of VOV and V threshold, which is nicely biased by the magic batteries. Um, and then lastly, from that, we can determine uh, the bias uh, drain current uh, as a function of VOV and GM bias. And so now, with all these variables that we have that we have fixed, uh, we can derive the rest, uh, W over L, which are functions of VOV and GM bias. Uh, we pick low values so that we don't have high in intrinsic capacitances. Uh, UD gain bandwidth, again, a function of uh, GM bias, and we can derive uh, CC to meet the unity gain bandwidth spec. Um, and then we can also predict the poles, and then we can cancel out that second pole with the nulling resistor. And so now we're done. We're done with that first stage. We've done a lot of the 
legwork to have an initial guess point. And then now we enter um, this iterative loop. And it's nice that I have a working default circuit that time perm uh, if time is really tight, I can always default back to the circuit and submit it, um, and it'll be fine. So as long as you have a good stable point, you can have a better intuition of the DC node voltages that are, are quote unquote the right operating points of all these transistors. And so now when you go to the, the optimization loop, um, you can see that I've broken it up into three nice stages. Um, and the idea is that when you tweak a knob at one stage, you're not degrading the performance of the previous stage. Um, and so for example, um, I ask myself, has the gain spec been met yet? If not, increase the bias transductance. Once I'm done with that, I move on to UD gain bandwidth, and that's when I play around with CC. But this would not degrade um, significantly the bias that I've worked so hard for. Um, so when you move through these stages, um, you're essentially checking these boxes off. And then at the end, you ask yourself, can you lower this GM bias? Um, and if you can, then you go, and then once you've lowered it, and you still have uh, met the gain spec, you go back and then you try to uh, uh, tweak these knobs and check those boxes again. Um, and so this is where I mentioned about a bit of spice monkeying. There is a um, section where I do get to sweep the nulling resistor, and this is essentially like a bump in the Bode plot, and we are trying to cancel out um, that second non-dominant pole and get the best margin performance that we can. And so once we've done that and we've converged to a solution, uh, we build our biasing circuits, which is um, we've already derived in class how to size those transistors. Uh, and so this is my performance. Admittedly, it is not, um, I definitely could have went more, and this was definitely due to time. Um, it was Thanksgiving, and I was <laughs> lowering my bias current, and they said dinner's ready, and so I just had to stop. Uh, <laughs> But I lowered it, and I definitely could have went more. But I think what is valuable to me is I'm presenting a very uh, comprehensive design flow that I can take even further, for not just for design, but for any other design. Um, and so that concludes my presentation. Um, and it's OK to be a spice monkey, despite what the professor says. Um, yeah. So uh, before you go on, I have one last question for you. you used to I did, yes. So we is you and Cadence? Um, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you.